Well, thank you for joining me my session. I understand that you are tired, so I appreciate your attention. My name is Mark Gazer. I really work at JP Morgan, but the, I'm going to talk about my little pet project I have been carrying around for too many years, maybe. It's very simple. Not, no rocket science. It's not part of the JP Morgan uh, 40, 50 million lines of Python code yet, hopefully. So you can later found, find the code and presentation at uh, Azure Notebooks. My username is Vulcano63. Yes, I'm old. And uh, it's called uh, Enumeration Under Collection. OK, let's start. First of all, why should anyone hack around enumeration? OK, uh, so. My, this is use case, which is not really, was my use case, but it's just an example, very simple example. You send REST request to remote server, receive the simple JSON, and then you want to parse it and mistype the key. So on the fly, where is the problem? On the server side, on the client side, right? So, and what if you have hundreds of keys? So what happened with me, I was working in a company, you know, when you have this little uh, round thing on your dashboard, uh, so some of you may understand where, and we had a project with uh, hundreds of G dictionaries with different keys. Okay, I'm ashamed to admit, I didn't know then that Enum exists. So I just did it, but I have learned the ugly tr truth. Enum exists. Why did I keep it? Okay, it's my precious, it's uh, written good enough, but beside that, let's see. Okay, the, the, something, I want to show you a couple of exhibits. You remember maybe Quick Brown Fox? So what about it? This is enumeration I created with the standard Python enumeration. As you see, I have created a class that inherits from enum enum. And I have painstakingly defined five attributes. Who is uh, fond of writing extra code? Raise your hands. Mm, OK. So, oops, sorry. What? Okay. So, I do it that way. And as you can see, there, is, there are several differences. It's shorter. I use the function call instead of class. Uh, I don't know if it's advantage or not how you like it. I use positional arguments when adding strings as enumerator values. I don't have to write them twice. Where I can't use the value as the name of a field of enumerator, I use keyword arguments. So my API allows to mix the styles. So is that all? Nothing to write home about up till now. But take a look at that. Uh, uppercase fox is my enumerator. Title case fox is enumerator created by standard means. And they're not equal. I remember <laughs> it's a real life anecdote. A colleague of mine has wasted half a day trying to understand why two enumerator values were not equal. He just imported them in different ways. So, what the hell? This is an explanation. In my variant, uh, uh, in Fox uppercase, which is my API, times re retains its type. It's still integer. 
Enumerator, which is standard enumerator, defines it as a special type. Uh, can we still compare them? Yeah, with some modification. Uh, again, who likes to write extra code? I don't. So, imagine that you want to know if value 8 is in the fox. Imagine you want to know what is symbolic name. The former is easy to check. Eight and Fox. Fox again is standard numerator. No, it is not there. Can we convert eight to its uh, symbolic name? As you can see, no. So, I think you got the message by the time. What about door number two? Eight and Fox. This is in the numerator created by my API. Uh, yeah, easy peasy. And can you get back the symbolic value if you need it for some reason? Yes, you can. Go in um. Okay. Exhibit two. Pure integer enum. I will define mine by vanilla Python uh, interface. Another one on uh, my interface. So you can see in the Python variant, you have to define values by one. I enjoyed the lecture by Dan Gittig, whoever have seen it, I highly recommend. And he introduced some real hack to do that. It's not hack, it's Python. Standard Python, and all you can have to do in my variant, just give it value, it will enumerate them for you. Okay, in this case, we, have, we do have the same values. They are comparable. But again, which way would you rather do, do it? Defining things manually or defining it by an interfaces? Okay, so what does high and weak kind do number two? Essentially, it's a set of high order functions. Uh, you know what is high order functions? I, I call them current because I, was, I took a course in Scala. But it's a, and she, decorator is a higher old, order function. So I have sequences. Uh, I have some shortcuts that hide more involved uh, APIs so that you don't have to write extra unless you want to. And my API is exp ex ex uh, can be enriched. So what can you do with my API? OK, you have seen this quick brown fox. And you can uh, backward convert. I'm repeating myself. Sorry about that. The value. and. One thing you can't have with the standard dictionaries, one of the reasons I have used it, now you know that you mistyped the value. And it's your bug. It's not a bug at the server and not at the client. Uh, how about processing JSON objects? OK. So I'm just, I'm old, I know. I have created a JSON with the old song. Some of you still remember it, I hope. And I just send it to an enum factory. What do I get? Do you want to sing along? Girl about, the girl. Is there anybody going? So in one simple line, I have created uh, that's a JSON. You can throw functions. Uh, after all, they are first-class citizens. Example, it's uh, just for the sake of example, it's not really practical. Just to show that it will work. Please. It works. Map and enumerate. You can mix 
applying mapping uh, to your values. And here is, I'm using the current or higher order form. I add as a higher level parameter a value converter, which is path to path. And what I get with that? Instant uh, enumeration and mapping. Okay, let's uh, cipher some messages. Just a joke. You can take uh, some function, pass it as a value converter, create a numerator. Yeah, but it's just a joke, as I said. <laughs> you can play around with the sequences. You can sequence the alphabet. You can create a convenient mapping of uh, sizes, computer sizes, this way. So uh, I don't know how many of you have ever tried to pass any, any configurations. It's um, some. It's not very convenient. So if you take my API, you can load it with one functional call, and you get it as one object. So I, I won't go into implementation, at least you really want to. It's about 160 lines of code, a lot of comments. I haven't read the clean code book. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. But uh, I, there are several functions. This is the base function in ARM factor carrying. As you can see, it can accept several parameters which are by, defo by default. I don't convert values by default, field converter, string upper, uh, ordered. I don't expect ordered as, uh, by default. And this is the shortcut. Same goes with sequences. Two function, one is uh, current that provides you some additional uh, ways to convert uh, values, like I have shown with the, uh, enumerating the sizes, and a shorter version, which is just accept sequence uh, symbolic names. You can provide step and enumerate them in the order. Expansions. There are a couple of expansions. Load JSON, which is not really needed, but I added it, and load any. Let, this is just a simple comparison of two ways to enumerate object. Uh, and a, another anecdote, I was recently told that there are three, uh, were three uh, rewrites of enum at my employee. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's a very heavy package. My package is very lightweight. And as you see, you write less, you you get brevity, you have to write much less. You have functional API. Uh, sometimes I find it more convenient than creating class, but that may be a matter of Taste. You can fix. You can mix positional arguments and keyword arguments to uh, uh, for your convenience. You can mix any types. Usually, it's not recommended, but uh, you can add mappings on the way without extra conversions. Enum attributes remain, retain their type. I have once tried uh, to use uh, enum with pandas. They don't speak well. Uh, OSPath and pathlib neither. And as I said, you can expand it as you wish. Uh, as I said, uh, you can find this uh, presentation at uh, Azure Networks. My username is Volcano63. And it contains also my email address. It's my personal project, not part of the JP Morgan, so you can ask me. Thank you.